So the reaction to Beast Wars Korada got me a little bit interested in finding out what other toys I have that maybe not everyone has heard of because, well, frankly, there's a ton of Transformers released in all manners and all parts of the world and you can't find out about every single one of them. So I'm going to see how many people have actually seen this toy, though I will admit Karada is probably much more random and much more obscure. This is Generations Wheelie, as brought to you by the GDO line. Uh, GDO, Global Defense Operative or Operation, or something of that nature. I, I can never remember what the acronym is. But nevertheless, these were toys that were meant for the Asian market that somehow got a release at Toys R Us in North America. Albeit a fairly limited release that a lot of people could not find. So we're going to talk about probably one of the most bizarre ones because they were known as very bizarre repaints and remolds of popular figures. Wheelie here, of course, Generations Jazz, redone in orange plastic as well as some darker orange running all throughout the bottom. He comes across as quite the sleek little sports car. I'm really happy with how the toy came out. Like, it really shouldn't work because Wheelie is known as a kind of a futuristic space car, dome, bubble top. Looks like something that's like halfway between a modern car and halfway between a Jetsons car. This, not so much. This is completely modern, albeit in an unusual color for this type of car. Uh, you will see he does have a little of an homage to his original deco and his original cockpit shaped windshield, which being this light blue going down the hood, and an Autobot symbol right there on the front, which is an appropriate place. I always like Autobot symbols right there. It just feels right, you know? That's where it's supposed to go. Yellow for the headlights and for the taillights, done up in red. I appreciate the extra color added in when they could have probably gotten away with just using the dark orange or the yellow again. I always like a little attention to detail like that. Yeah, it's a perfectly fine sports car. The only oddity that, uh, physically that might come from this, aside from you probably wouldn't see a car this expensive in this color scheme, are the completely gray wheels. I kind of wish the hubs were painted just to kind of complete the look, but uh, G1 Wheelie had the gray wheels going on too, so I guess that's a matter of accuracy too. It is a bizarre little toy in of itself, and that's exactly what these were designed to be. Uh, again, it's, uh, it has all the advantages of the jazz mold. There's handles molded in. You can see the gas cap molded in on this side, not on this side. Very smart. Good on you for paying attention. Rear view mirror is molded in. There's a spot for the license plate as well as the exhaust pipes molded in. They got a lot of detail right on this one, and I'm very happy with how that came out. Now for... A few extra features. Well, uh, there's a few things we can do. I will tell you right off the bat. Rolling not so well. Which is because his weapon got changed. And we'll talk about the weapon in robot mode. But as much as I could, as I could not get it to peg in completely in storage area here. So unfortunately, I couldn't like I couldn't get it to peg in so much to where it cleared the wheels. So with it in, he couldn't roll. With him out, well, honestly, he's not rolling too great there either. But it might just be my fault for misalignment here. He's kind of easy to misalign transforming. But if you want a little bit of feature, he does have a carryover from Jazz, which are these fold out. Oh, hang on, they're clipped in, so they come off easy. These fold out speakers, which can actually work in the vehicle mode as well, which is a nice little attention to detail. They are hinged, they are ball jointed, they are rotational, they do a lot of stuff. And if you want them sticking out in the vehicle mode, if you want to pretend like he's blasting tunes down the highway, that's what you can do. If you want to pretend they're sonic weapons, that's what you can do. That's what your imagination's for. Use it. But it's a little bit yeah, you'll notice it's all on translucent hinges and you get tired of me talking about how much I really don't like translucent plastic in these toys but you know I mention it where it comes up so as long as we're opening up doors let's go ahead and transform him and we'll start here by splitting the rear end I like to split the rear end here first instead of unfolding the legs because his hood the top of him rather 
It's held on with these two little translucent tabs, and I want to be very careful not to screw anything up when transforming them. There's a little bit of an automorph in the leg as we extend it out, which, hang on, if it will actually cooperate with me. Now I'm recording, it's not going to cooperate with me. It did before when we did the dry run. Come on. Mm. Okay, see, this is really embarrassing. When I actually get to transforming a toy and it just does not want to cooperate at, like, at all. Here, we'll try the other leg. We'll see if something's going wrong. See, look. That leg worked fine. That leg's cooperating, you know. What's your problem over here, lefty? See? All the way down. See, that works. That's how it's supposed to work. Mm. The trick is there's an automorph in here that gets a little bit stuck if you're not... Ah, uh, come on. Actually, hang on, hang on. And we're back. Something got really jammed up in there when I transformed him to vehicle mode. So I don't know how that happened, but I know my own uh, user error. That's not something the toy is meant to do. So I kind of screwed up, and I'm man enough to admit when I screw up. So. We'll start and we'll actually uh, get this back on track by opening up the arms here. We'll straighten them out as such. And since uh, this is kind of the time for this kind of gimmick, eee, a little bit of Automorph for you. And luckily, Automorph that actually works pretty well. So, you know, there's, there's uh, no Bumblebee scenario going on here. Oh, just kind of getting him a little bit lined up and make sure everything's okay. Yeah, everything's okay. And through a bit of adjustment, we get a proper look at the robot mode. And this is definitely not your usual wheelie. He's grown up. This is wheelie after he's held on to the Matrix, where, you know, he doesn't, instead of getting a trailer, he just turns into a normal car, because, you know, he's just kind of a little weird alien combat at first. This is probably one of the most bizarre uses of a jazz mold I've ever seen. And look at the face! Like, okay, there's a little bit of extra lining, and his chin is kind of, like, jutting out, you know, animated style, but that's still very much G1 Wheelie. You know, it, it's like a child. It's just, it's like a child's head stuck on an adult's body. It's cr kind of creepy. And the big, wide eye. I will admit, like, they got the youthfulness across. The big, wide eyes, you know, instead of the usual visors or, you know, re like, really sharp, eye, you know, it works in a very bizarre, it's definitely wheelie, kind of a little bit older kind of way. I don't know, like, the okay, the Reveal the Shield Jazz Mold is probably one of the best molds to come out in its time. And I have no idea why it never got a retail re-release or repaint of any kind. And this is the only other one that came out at any brick and mortar store. Plenty of, like, plenty of web exclusives and plenty of BotCon exclusives and whatnot, but this was the only other time you could buy the mold at a store, which was just bizarre. As you can see, the proportions on the toy are absolutely great. The arms are the right thickness. The torso doesn't jut out too far. You know, the legs look nice and thick and powerful. It does use its bulk effectively, so there's very little kibble going on. And what kibble there is is... Very much G1 style kibble, so I don't begrudge it really. Uh, someone mentioned I don't really talk about the back of a toy very much, and this is one of those cases where uh, that's probably a good idea. Uh, the, this is one of those first molds where you started noticing a lot more hollowed out parts. Parts that used to be made of two clamshell pieces of plastic, now just one. This was where the cost cutting era began, but. It's still not too bad on this toy. It's only in a few spots. And he still feels really solid. It's really solid. Like, this this toy is right at home amongst the other classics toys. Or at least the Jazz version was. Uh, as you can see, the robot mode reveals a lot more detail. I'm a big fan of all the extra molded in vents and groove lines in here. One thing that I also noticed, the robot mode, except for the head, uses practically no paint whatsoever i mean you can see all this molded detail in his midsection and his thighs and none of it has been painted in any way it's all done with plastic molding which does result in some weird things like the knee area being two-tone on both sides 
and the thighs just randomly being a darker shade of orange and being the only thing molded in that color on the whole t toy like outside of like little tiny bits and internal parts but visually the only thing molded in that color that is strange like it's very it's very unusual to see a toy just like so barren of paint but it still kind of works it's all there and it's still believable as wheelie you know, it does take a lot of liberties with his original design to make it work in this mold. Now, for a little bit of play value, there is that weapon I took off, which is his classic slingshot. Which, uh, the GDO's remolding the head was pretty common. Completely changing the weapon? Like, a lot of credit. Uh, that I did not expect, and it's very welcome. Like, that really brings a little bit of Wheelie's classic persona in. Because I believe this is the first wheelie toy that actually includes an accessory slingshot. There's others that pay homage to it or mold or paint it in, but none that include it as an actual weapon. Speaking of, you'll notice that extra handle. Yep, that's what that's for. He can use it as a standard blaster as well. Though, I'm not, I'm not up on my space guns. That seems like the recoil might snap the whole thing in half. And if it does actually just fire lasers and recoil is not a problem, I'm not seeing where it stores its own battery. It's a little bit silly, but I like that they use. I, I like that they actually thought to include it two different ways. It's, you know, well, maybe if Wheelie's grown up, he's not just using a slingshot anymore. Maybe an actual gun is actually in order here. For other playability, as we saw in vehicle mode, the speakers can still fold out, and they look a little bit better here now for jazz this was kind of weird you know I, I think they're really just kind of playing to his name more than anything but for wheelie um i don't know instead of just like pl blaring out music and audio weaponry this is probably just gonna this is probably just gonna bust out beat poetry which arguably is a much more dangerous weapon than anything any sonic weapon jazz could break out so, what? Uh, I, I, I don't know, it's his type of warfare. Don't judge Wheelie. He has his methods, okay? Yeah. I'm just happy I'm getting through this entire review without rhyming anything, accidental or otherwise. And finally, we'll look at articulation. Head is completely ball-jointed, not quite as much up motion as I would like, but enough, just in case you need it. Ball-jointed shoulders, bicep rotation. Elbows, which are lovely... At, at 30 at uh, the typical 90 degree but also it is double jointed so he gets a full well almost full 180 you get my point it's a great it's a great elbow joint wrist swivel we do have a waist rotation and luckily the back kibble is hinged out a little bit so you can adjust it just to make sure it gets out of the way of any poses you want ball jointed hips thigh swivel knees fully bend and the ankles go back and forth, and the feet do collapse as well. And they are slanted on the inside, so the legs do naturally stand a little bit spread out to have a more natural stance. All in all, very poseable figure, just as Jazz was. He has all the advantages that that toy did, as well as just being one of the most bizarre reuses of a mold I've ever witnessed. And in a strange way, it works. It should not work. Nothing about this toy should work. Wheelie is not like a in-shape Autobot. He is not meant to be bulky and thick in any way. He's not to have. A, he's not meant to have a hood chest as a classic Autobot would. He's not meant to have door wings. He's not meant for any of this. It still kind of works. And of the GDOs, I, 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 I honestly admit, for one of the most hated G1 characters, he's kind of my favorite of the GDO line. Uh, I, I wish they did that more often, because there's an adventurous spirit here that I used to associate with BotCon toys. You know, it shouldn't work, but it does. It's crazy enough to still be really neat. It's kind of what I miss out of the BotCon exclusives. But hey, if we can get them at retail now... All the more welcome.